Hey there, and thanks for joining me today. Uh, I'm going to be going over some uh, progress on a game that I've been working on, and uh, uh, happy to have you along here for the uh, ride on this. Um, I wanted to apologize too if you've watched some of my uh, first few videos. Um, I've just been kind of um, learning how to set up my equipment correctly, and uh, had some problem with my webcam on the first few videos. You probably noticed it was pretty, uh, pretty blurry and pretty zoomed in. Um, so anyway, I think I've finally. Uh, work through all those issues. Uh, hopefully this image is looking much clearer for you. Um, I think I was actually also recording at a lower resolution than uh, HD, so anyway, that should all be sorted out here. Um, so yeah, what, um, in, ca in case you're not aware, I've been kind of working on a game as a side project, and uh, I'm using Unity as the engine for it, and uh, there's a few things I'm trying to do along the way. Um, I'm trying to keep as much of the code that's related to Unity um, isolated to, to just ha basically interact with Unity and then um, have it um, use just kind of vanilla C Sharp classes uh, to handle most of the game logic or the you know, business logic. So kind of trying to put a, a wall between um, the parts that need to interact with Unity and then the uh, code that actually supports all the uh, decision making uh, in the background. So anyway, um, a system that I've been working on recently is just getting a, a simple little like dialogue window that'll pop up and uh, be able to show you know like a character's name and and uh, go through a couple sentences from them and then pull up another character's name and go through a couple sentences from them. Um, it's still not exactly where I would uh, want it to be uh, when I'm done, but um, I thought it'd be kind of an interesting point to just stop and take a look at um, what all was needed to support that. Um, you know, just from, from mentioning it, it sounds like a pretty simple system, but uh, there actually end up being a lot of pieces involved. Um, you know, you need to figure out, one, how to um, make the actual UI thing that is going to pop up on the screen and, dis and display all the information. But, you know, it also involved figuring out how to, like, pause the game world, like, prevent everything else from moving around while this dialogue window's up, so you're not getting, like, attacked by enemies um, as you're, you know, trying to read this dialogue, um, figuring out how to, uh, you know, just put together some basic data and some files that are editable somewhere that aren't um, actually like embedded in the code for the program. So uh, yeah, making it like easy to update this text that we're going to be displaying, um, figuring out how to take that text and turn it into um, objects in the game that we can work with like normal game objects. So, uh, so it isn't just like a big blob of uh, strings that we have to parse through. Um, and then, yeah, figuring out how to read files in. Um, so anyway, there were just like a lot of little um, pieces involved in this. And this happens a lot with programming. Like, you start with something that seems pretty simple. Um, and you don't need to tackle all these pieces at once, but I kind of spent maybe an hour or two... Um, several sessions in a row figuring out how to like kind of break down these things into the smallest pieces, uh, smallest useful pieces that I could to kind of make sure each thing had one responsibility. So anyway, I've probably talked about it enough here, um, but I'll go ahead and show you uh, what this looks like here. I'm going to get my uh, video out of the way here a little bit. And uh, you can see over here, um, I'm going to be looking off camera a little bit here as I'm doing this, so uh, don't be alarmed by that. But uh, on the left over here, you can see I've got just like a rough uh, game world set up. And uh, you'll see this little box here, and this is gonna be where um, that dialogue's gonna get displayed. And uh, I'm just gonna run it here real quick so you can take a look at it. And uh, in order to get it to come up, we're gonna hit spacebar. And you notice it kind of animates in. And then here we've got um, a character's name and just a sentence from them. As I hit spacebar, it's gonna scroll through all the sentences for this character. And uh, as we keep going, you can see it's brought in another character's name here and the first sentence for them. And then um, I'll just continue to go through that. And then when we hit the end, it just disappears. So, uh, you know, pretty simple system. I'll just run through it here one more time real quick, a little bit faster. So when we hit space comes up and we can see uh, the first character and their dialogue, second character and their dialogue. Um, so that's all pretty, um, the, the text that gets pulled up is kind of set at this point. 
Uh, so I do need to add some flexibility so that it's, you know, showing the text for the right scene or the right characters. But um, that's stuff that I'll um, probably show in some uh, follow videos. Um, but yeah, just to give you an idea of kind of like the uh, code that's behind this, I'm just going to run through um, what this ended up looking like here for a second. So the way uh, Unity is set up is you attach uh, scripts to game objects. So in my game, in my scene, I have a, a HUD game object, and within it, it has a dialogue game object. And that dialogue game object contains the panel, which is like the black uh, shape that the text goes on top of. And then I have um, an object for the text, which is like the sentences, and then the title, which is whatever the title is that's above that right now. It's just showing um, characters' names. So those are kind of the uh, Unity uh, game objects that I'm using. And you can see on this dialog game object, um, I've attached some uh, components over here. So one of them is the animator, and that's the thing that makes um, the dialog scroll up when you hit spacebar, and then scroll down when you're done. Um, I'm not gonna get into the details on that. I could show that probably in another video. But um, here there's a controller script, and the controller script knows about the text game object, which was the one uh, that was over here, and it knows about the title game object uh, from over here. And um, if we hop over and look at the script, uh, you can see I have this uh, dialog controller, which was the script that's attached to the dialog. And uh, it knows about that text and title, as well as some other things like um, that animator. It knows about uh, an instance of itself, so this is using the, like a singleton pattern to make sure there's only ever one uh, dialogue controller in existence, because uh, you wouldn't want to end up with two things that were trying to control the dialogue at the same time. And then uh, essentially all the code in here is doing is keeping track of um, when it's open, what animation, uh, what's going on with the animations, and uh, when to move on to the next uh, piece of dialogue, but doesn't actually really know anything about uh, how the dialogue system is set up or what going on to the next thing even means. Um, it's really meant to be that uh, layer between Unity and actually getting into how the, um, the game logic set up, uh, which I had mentioned earlier. So uh, for example, um, like when you open the dialogue, all it's doing is saying, hey, get the dialogue go ahead and animate this thing in, and then uh, essentially pause the game. Um, that's what this line's doing. And then is uh, every time somebody hits uh, the space, uh, space bar button, they're just gonna call next. And next uh, has most of the logic in this uh, script. So it basically says if it's closed, go ahead and open it and uh, say it's no longer closed. And then uh, if it's not closed, see if we're done, see if there's anything left to, any more dialogue left to, to run through. And then um, if it's finished, you know, close it and say that it is closed. And then otherwise, go ahead and move on to the next thing. So it says, it tells the dialogue manager, hey, give me the next piece and then update the, update the dialogue in the UI. And then there's basically just a bunch of little helpers down here to, um, support all that. Um, none of them are really very complicated. And then there's a little effect down here to give that nice, um, the nice effect of the text just kind of uh, being typed in very quickly uh, instead of it just all flashing up like off and on, which can be a little jarring. Um, so yeah, this is kind of that, that layer that separates um, what's going on in Unity from the actual game logic. And then here is the actual dialogue manager. And this is the thing that knows um, how to how to load the data, how to uh, interact with it, what getting the next piece of dialogue means. Um, so essentially when this thing is instantiated, you notice this doesn't, um, I'm not referring to Unity up here at all. This is just, the only thing this is relying on is uh, the generic system collections and then this other uh, uh, namespace I have for uh, loading in uh, JSON assets, which we'll get into a little bit uh, here in a bit. So really this just keeps track of a set of dialogues, uh, which dialogue we're on, which message within that dialogue we're looking at, 
um, and then it knows how to, to reach into the dialogue and get some uh, of the bits of information. So if we want the title, it knows that that is um, the current dialogue's name. If we want the message, that's the current dialogue's um, uh, current message, essentially. And then it also knows when it's asked for the next thing, uh, it should either try to give you the next message in the current dialogue, or if there are no more messages, um, but there are more dialogues to move on to the next dialogue. And uh, it has some other supporting stuff, some other things in here to support all that, like uh, it can it can let you know when it's finished, so there's no more dialogue, there's no more there's no more messages, or there's no more dialogue. Um, and then this is all essentially to support that. So this is this is kind of handling the layer of like assuming we already have the dialogues um, and we want to just kind of move through them. This is the thing that's responsible for that. So it doesn't know about how Unity works. It doesn't know about how you actually get the dialogues. Um, that is all deferred over to this JSON assets loader, and um, that just takes a path. And we can see that um, this also takes a path. So that's coming in from the controller and it's sending in the applications uh, streaming assets path. Um, so anyway, that all gets passed through to the loader. And the only thing that the loader knows how to do is it knows how to go out and read uh, a set of files and um, it knows how to uh, request um, the information in those files to be deserialized. So it's taking just the, the whatever the text is in there and actually turning it into like an object that uh, C-sharp knows how to use. And um, the way this is uh, working, if you look over here on the left under streaming assets, you'll see I have a dialogues folder. And within that, there's two, two kinds of files. There's this manifest at the top, um, and then there's individual um, JSON files below that. All the manifest is is a list of file names. So essentially I'm telling the loader, hey, go look in this folder and you'll just know by default there's a manifest in here and just grab every file that's listed in that manifest. And it knows then to go and grab um, these two files, ghost and mom. Um, and the thing that's nice about that is if, you have, if you're working with other people on your team and they don't wanna actually get into like the code, they can come in here either through directly editing it or you can set up a UI for them and they can just list out every file that they know they're gonna have included in their folder and then it can just read all those in. And if you go look at these, uh, these files represent the JSON for a dialogue object. And right now they're pretty basic. They have an ID, which I'm not really using. <laughs> they have the name of the um, person who's talking or the title. Uh, and then they have just an array of messages. So it's just um, basically each of these is a sentence that's gonna get displayed and they're all separated by commas. And you can have as many of these as you wanted. Right now I just have two. If we had a third one that looked similar um, after we got through the ghost and the mom, then we would get to the next character. Um, so that it's pretty uh, naive, but for now, uh, it's good enough. It's a good enough way to just kind of get started. Um, so I'm just going to scroll back over here to our loader. So what the loader is going to do is um, we're going to ask it for dialogues and give it a folder. And so here we can see we're asking the loader for dialogues and we're saying dialogues and it just knows to look in that um, streaming assets folder for the dialogues folder and then by default it's going to look for this manifest and then from that manifest it's going to go and look for each of these things each of the individual objects so here we're asking uh, for a new um, files deserializer that's going to return objects of type uh, dialogue and I just put all my objects in this data namespace. Um, and then the list of, uh, th this takes um, file uh, JSON strings, and those are gonna come out of uh, reading, in the, uh, reading in that manifest, and then returning um, the JSON strings uh, from, the, uh, from the manifest for the file names. And then we can go uh, make the next hop, which is over to this files deserializer. So this is saying we've got all these uh, 
you know, big strings, one per file, and now we need to actually turn these into things that we're going to use in our game um, and uh, objects that C Sharp can understand. So over here, um, we're going to basically uh, read in um, an array of we're gonna have an array of strings, uh, one for each asset, and basically we're gonna take the uh, um, the string and just add it in the assets, and then return it. So that uses the file reader, and the file reader here is just gonna go out and um, generate this thing called a string response for every uh, one of those files. So it's gonna um, basically read in all that text, and then uh, it's going to include some additional information. So it's going to give us the JSON string, it's going to give us a status message and whether it succeeded or not. And string response is the thing that gets generated there. That's pretty, it's pretty much just a data object that holds the JSON string status and success doesn't really do anything intelligent. Um, and then all that gets used um, so we take all those strings and we actually need to turn them into objects. So this files deserializer knows how to take um, a list of strings that are JSON strings and then return back a list of uh, usable uh, objects, uh, we'll call them assets here, of the type that's requested. So uh, in our case, it's going to be dialogue. So we're going to get a list of all the dialogues back and then uh, this just actually does the work for each individual file, so uh, uses the JSON utility, um, and then uh, for a given type, which is going to be dialog for us, um, it generates the uh, deserializes the uh, object from that. Um, so that so that's what's actually doing the map, like taking just a raw piece of text that looks like JSON or that is JSON. It takes that and turns it into like the object that we can actually use in uh, C Sharp. So that um, mapping happens by type. So um, let me find that real quick. So if we go look at data, you can see I have this um, namespace for data, and then we have a dialog class. And uh, there's a public ID, a public string name, and a public string array for messages. And those things just correspond with the JSON uh, attributes. So if we just pulled one of these up, you can see these, these match up exactly. There's an ID and a name and a messages. So as long as you have the, these attributes in your JSON file, they're just going to map them over directly to those um, uh, properties that you have listed on your classes. So it's just it's a kind of one-to-one -one thing. And then, and that's cool because it makes it really easy. So basically, you can use JSON, which is a, a nice, easy format to work with. Uh, for whatever your objects are, you just need to use a consistent format and then list out those properties in your objects, and then you're good to go. Um, so you can see, too, there's some flexibility in the stuff that I've built. Um, you can provide different types. So now I have a system set up where I could load not just dialogues, but if I wanted to load in other things like really any, any kind of game data, now I have kind of a pattern I can follow for doing that, um, which, is, which is one thing that I wanted to get from this. Um, and then I think that's more or less it. I also have a, uh, an object for the uh, manifest that just contains an, uh, array, a string array of file names. Um, so like if we looked at that manifest object here, you'd, you'd also see that file names is just the only JSON property there, and it contains an array of strings of the file names. So yeah, it's all all pretty straightforward, but um, done in a way that's pretty flexible. It should make it, should all this work should make it easy for me to um, pull in other objects in the future, which was kind of one of my goals with it. And um, yeah, it's there's a lot here, um, and this is a really interesting thing to me about programming is something so basic is just this little dialog box touches on so many different things like we needed uh, we needed UI we needed animation we needed um, a way to display each piece of um, data in the UI uh, you know we needed a way to pause the whole game world which uh, luckily was like a trivial thing but that could have actually been a lot of work if it wasn't really easy to for uh, unity um, to have that kind of plumbing in place already 
could have been a lot of work for me. I was actually anticipating spending like a couple of days on that. Uh, so I was really happy when I found out that Unity had something built in for just kind of stopping everything. Um, and then we needed to figure out how to, you know, represent the dialogue. We needed to figure out how to make it easy to um, put it in a format that's easy to edit for anybody in a file, figure out how to read that in, figure out how to take the strings that we were reading in and turn those into actual um, objects that we could use in C Sharp uh, to do, do the things we wanted with that, and then figure out how to manage it all, like figure out how to step from one message to the next, and then from one dialogue um, per, you know, one character's dialogue to the next character's dialogue, and when we were done, figure out how to like close it all out. So, um, yeah, I mean, by no, no means do you need to tackle all of those pieces at one time, and I would really recommend you just pick one like simple element of this at a time. Like you don't have to start with this whole pipeline. You could just throw, throw a text array in and try to, or even one piece of text in and try to get that loaded um, up on the screen without worrying about all these other steps of going out and reading files and deserializing them and figuring out your data format and all that stuff. But it's just kind of a good example of something that looks really simple. Uh, there can be a lot of depth there if um, you're not anticipating it. And this is a big challenge with um, programming and like, I mean, makes it pretty clear like at why estimating is, can be really tricky because like sometimes you're just, um, you don't know, like there's just a lot of things that are either unknown or um, a lot of moving parts. So anyway, really simple, um, really simple system, but I thought it would be a fun one to just kind of step through and show you how those pieces fit together. Um, I'm actually hoping to like, when I get this a little further along, to break this down into um, something I can put into a project and just make available for anybody who wants to uh, to use this. Uh, I don't know, like, I'm sure for whatever game you're using this in, you would need to customize it to some degree, but it might be a, a useful starting point at least. Um, so anyway, yeah, thanks for uh, joining me in this video and taking a look at how uh, I set all this up. Um, I'm looking forward to working on it some more and kind of cleaning it up and then being able to show you kind of my my progress with it and where where I end up. Um, I'm also hoping to um, make a similar system where as you walk by things, you can just get little like text hints above them. Um, so yeah, we'll see how easy this is to adapt to that. Maybe I'll even do like a live stream of working on that. It could be kind of interesting. But yeah, if you have uh, questions or comments, uh, please leave them below. Uh, if, if you found this helpful and you wanna see more videos like this, please hit subscribe. Um, if you liked the video, hit like. If you hated it, hit uh, dislike. And uh, I'm gonna be um, I'm gonna be doing more videos like this and sharing them on Patreon. So if you're interested in uh, you know helping me out or um, you know just being a little more involved with what's going on with the channel, um, you can check out that link in the description below to get more information about that. And yeah, thanks again for joining. See you in the next one. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, please click the subscribe button down below to be notified about new videos. Uh, also, if you're interested in helping out the channel, I have links in the description to my Patreon page as well as Amazon links to all the gear that I use to make these videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.